Yes. Thank you and uh, welcome everyone back after our short break to the next presentation, which is going to be about how we can bridge the correct information between service providers and tourists in Setoma. I'm briefly going to introduce our team, uh, the tasks that we were given, um, talk about our field work, um, our main observations, which led us to a problem statement, a selected focus, and uh, I will fin or we will finish by presenting, of course, our uh, selected ideas for the problem. Our team consists of five members. That's of uh, me, Joanna from Germany, um, Stas from Ukraine, Lucy from Argentina, um, Ashish from India and Greta from Estonia. While we're of course all not uh, experts in tourism, we have a very broad background of academic and working experience and it would be interesting to point out that Ashish actually has five years of uh, ex or professional experience in online tourism in India. So the task that of the, of the six uh, tasks that were given to our course, we were the group that focused on the experience of Western European tourists that want to have a cultural experience in the region of Setoma or Lake Pipsi. We conducted our field work in, Octo in the beginning of October of this year, um, where we went on a two-day trip to Vasca. Here you can see some pictures of our trip. Um, a part of our group went to Vasca by, uh, with a rental car, and Ashish actually took the challenge to go there by public transport, which worked uh, very well. When we were there, we did uh, interviews with um, service providers, locals, the information center, and the few tourists that we found. We do have to say that the, this presentation is mainly based on our personal experience, though, as the, we found only one group of tourists, which we only had the chance to, uh, to talk to for 10 minutes. Um, so to have a cultural experience in the region, we had planned um, to visit cultural sites and museums, see the traditional dancing, and of course, uh, try the heavily uh, advertised local cuisine. Here you can see our uh, final customer journey that we created, and you can see that uh, we had very mixed feelings and experience during the trip. Let me start with our positive experiences. Um, we had a really easy time to, to book a car and also uh, find out how to get to Vasca by public transportation. During the trip, we had a lovely sauna experience in the Vasca Sanatorium. Um, we had the chance to uh, see the or attend a traditional dancing evening in the town hall because during that uh, week when we visited, it was Setoma Cultural Week. Um, and we found that yeah, the, the place was very inclusive and especially what was very good for us because we're all students, it was affordable and we saw very beautiful nature. Um, what we had mixed feelings about, but which was not really a bad experience, was that we got no response from the hotel, and we also wanted uh, that we booked when we had a question that we wanted to ask, and we wanted to book a cruise where we also got no response, but we just yeah, decided to go on the trip anyways. Um, when we were there, um, or no, before the trip, it was also very difficult for us because as Western Europeans, we uh, at the moment often book um, accommodation via Airbnb, but there were no Airbnbs available in the region. So we in the end went for one of the hotels that was advertised on the visit. So to my website and our stay there was good. Um, during the trip, we had some language barriers because except for Stas, we um, all don't speak Estonian or Russian. Um, so, yeah, with English it was sometimes difficult to get along. We had limited uh, food options because all the restaurants we looked up on Google were, were closed or yeah, either temporarily closed or not there in the place at all. Um, we wanted to book sauna treatments, but they were all booked out already. The museum that we wanted to go to was unfortunately closed. Um, and the, the biggest problem or worst experience that we had was, which was very frustrating were, frustrating, were the incorrect information on Google Maps because that's simply the app that most tourists use when traveling. Okay, so thank you, Joanna. Uh, so from after, after our experience, we found some observations that were kind of general of our time there. First of all, we had very high expectations because we traveled during Setama week. So we expected them to be lots of activities and actually what we could only find was the experience of being able to see the locals having their typical dance. That was very interesting. 
Uh, we found also that the locals weren't very interested in increasing tourism in the area. Of course, this is off season, so probably this differs with high season. Then the available information was actually most of the time incorrect or misleading and not in English. So um, this uh, creates an uncomfortable situation for the tourists. And we also saw that there was very good infrastructure. For example, the hotel has very good infrastructure. It's good to take groups. There's lots of things to, things to do and uh, spaces to use. But we, we thought that they were kind of underused. So, okay, this slide is missing a bit of information. I think our presentation has some uh, technical issues. But um, some of the problems we find is that, okay, this information uh, is frustrating that it, the information is correct is incorrect. For example, online there was a, the opportunity of, of uh, booking a special meal where you can try typical cuisine. When we contacted them, they said it was only available for groups over 15. Furthermore, the museum said it was open online. We were told by locals that it was open. We arrived at the museum and we find a little sign at the bottom that said, sorry, we open in three hours in the end. And this sign wasn't even in English. It was only in Estonian, so that wasn't even very good for tourists. Furthermore, um, we were getting there and we were using both Waze and Google Maps and there was a road that was under construction, very close to Varska. None of the applications said, beware, it's under construction, you're gonna be rerouted, nothing. And that was kind of interesting because usually Waze informs you, hey, there's a construction up ahead, be, uh, be careful, and nothing. Okay, so after seeing all these problems, we worked on our selected focus. To do this, we did our how might we matrix where we saw different options of how we can improve things in the area, things that have large impact, small impact, difficult or easy to implement. So things that have large impact and are difficult to implement was basically, um, for example, how to make this more accessible by public transport. Ashis ended up traveling alone in the only bus that arrived there on the day and he was alone on the bus. That was surprising. And then, uh, how can we get the locals more engaged in uh, uh, promoting this area? For example, something difficult but with small impact could be, how can we get the Estonians to promote this area, or how can we make this area more attractive in off-season? Something with small impact and easy to implement would be uh, using the existing infrastructure better. How to use what already exists in a better way. Finally, we focused on things that have a large impact and are easy to do, like for example, bridging the expectations between what you find online, for example, in Visit Setoma, and what you actually find when you get there. And also, one of the most important things we focused on was ensuring the correctness of information on Google and on the place. Because we also had the experience of going to restaurants, for example, that said were open, reaching there and finding they were closed. This is, of course, understandable in off-season, but it would have been useful if this was online when you Google it. And uh, so now I will pass on to Gret that will tell you a bit about how we got to our solution. So uh, how did we came up with the ideas? Well, first of all, we tried to generate as many ideas as possible. We used uh, different brainstorming methods and techniques. We also received help from our course mates. Uh, then we started sort of systemizing the uh, <laughs> the IDs we got, as you can see on the background, on the picture. Uh, and we got the main five groups, which were solutions that needed government interference, um, providing different training programs to the service providers there, uh, generating a whole new app and updating the Google platform, which is the uh, platform that most tourists use. Uh, we tried to select the solution, which had the uh, easiest solution, but the greatest effect. Um, here you can see the list of ideas we came up with. Uh, the most important ones were uh, providing different training programs for the service providers, especially on IT and uh, how do you update that information. Uh, we thought of uh, indicating the uh, correct information on Google uh, and the last updated information uh, we thought of uh, giving out some so, some sort of rewarding points for giving out uh, for transmitting correct information, and then generating a whole new app, and also most importantly, just sending the service providers a notification to update their uh, information. 
And now Stas will talk about our solution. Thank you so much, Greta. And yes, I will briefly present you what we've been working on in the last couple of weeks, basically our solution. So this puzzle of bridging the correct information between tourist pro service providers and tourists was not the easy task, yet we believe what we offer is feasible and might have a great impact in longer term. So we were thinking on how can we make tourist providers not only enforced to do this, but also make them committed and more aware of the tourist experience that they have in the region. And for that, we propose a multi-stage solution, which consists of gathering service providers of Setama region, conducting a one-day workshop organized in the region, preferably, and also the follow-up program that we will explain in a further detail. And we would like to highlight that this tra tr the workshop that we propose is not the solution itself, but just a part of a longer strategy. And we also found out, with the help of our colleague Greta, that the Seto Setoma region has its longer strategy plan, and the training of tourist providers is included there, so we believe that it aligns. So what is going to be happening in the workshop is basically we will educate service providers on how to update the information correctly, how to analyze their traffic from tourists, and how to be more committed to what they do. So the desired effect is not make them forced to do things, and, but make them more motivated. And I could briefly, briefly explain what the possible follow-up could look like. So we think that it would really be really of help if every service provider received personalized updates every month or so. We will, it will be decided on the workshop with the uh, collective decision of all the service providers. And for example, it could include things like that they receive once and the indicators that they have to keep updated. For example, you can see this is the description, the photos, the pricing, and the house rules. These are the this is the basic data that every tourist needs, and if those this information is not provided. The tourist industry cannot really work. So these are the fields that they need to fill once. But also we offer ongoing monitoring indicators that needs to be checked every now and then. Here you can see that there is a, the events that every service provider has that should be added in the calendar. And also the various promotion methods should be applied. And also we, we think that being responsive is very important. So we included that too. And about the analytical part, my colleague Ashish will explain you in the remaining three minutes that we have. Thanks, Tess. Okay, um, so well, whilst Tess has covered um, you know, the basic IT intervention on, on, on how we could do it, I think the objective over here is to ensure that we bring about a behavioral change in service providers, right? So if we, if we believe that having uh, timely information, having accurate information is a good result, uh, both for service providers as well as for tourists, we need to um, have a mechanism where we can nudge them into taking certain actions uh, that comes to this outcome, right? Uh, for that, we believe we need to be able to show them on, we need to be able to connect the dots and show them on what action um, on, on what the result of their action is. So for example, every time, and this is just one example of it, every time they update the information, what we could do is um, on the Visit Setoma website or the Visit Estonia website, um, have, have something that indicates when the information was updated and reward them in a way where, um, where the most frequently updated information shows up higher on the search results, right? So it's a, it's a, a subtle manner of, um, of rewarding the accommodations. Um, the other way is uh, the, the other small intervention that we thought would would really help, but is um, you know would really help tourists make their decisions is is having some more information on the visit Setoma and the visit Estonia website as far as the service providers go. So, for example, we get to know just building expectations on on how long does it take um, for a service provider to respond to a query, right? So that that's something that you know that that, that we need to get an idea on 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 when was it last uh, updated, how much does it cost, a little bit about the host, etc. So you you get an idea of what to expect at the accommodation or at the service provider's place. Um, uh, Again, um, while there was information um, on, on how to get there from a region perspective, uh, we found information on the last mile perspective completely lacking, right? So uh, it's impossible actually to use the website and land up at the accommodation only by using this. Um, the other small, I'm going to be rushing through this right now, but the other small intuition that we think on an ongoing basis that would help nudge a behavioral change is, uh, is to send across some kind of statistics 
to service providers in a very simple manner that lets them know that they're not operating in a vacuum um, by, by showing um, information on how they've done um, compared to their past and compared to others in the region. Uh, the way it would look is very straightforward. A mail just comes in with a very, very straightforward thing, nudging them to take an action. So we tried to test our solution on the service providers. What I did was I sent out many emails to the people involved in tourism sector there, uh, including governor of Setoma and uh, members of the uh, Seto Museum staff. Uh, the feedback was qu uh, really great. Uh, mostly they were happy that we were trying to focus on them and uh, that, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there were unfortunately some situations where the people there misunderstood our project and we didn't receive the input what we wanted. But overall the feedback was really great and they said that uh, sending them uh, automatic notifications would be a good idea. Okay, so we want to conclude a bit of what our solution is. It's very important to note that this is not an IT solution, but what we want to change, what we want to do is change the behavior of the service provider, show them that th this change in behavior and to motivate them to do these improvements in order to give tourists a better experience. And uh, so this is a system of behavioral change, of nudging and of motivation. Yeah, thank you very much for your attention. And we see as service providers and people from tourist industry who managed to come here for this workshop, then we believe that organizing it in such a region, we're, because the region is really great and it has a great potential, we think that it could also work. So we are open for your questions if you have any, and thank you for your attention. All right, any feedback, any comments? I think when uh, we uh, discussed in uh, the classwork also the experiences, uh, not only of your group, but also of other groups, uh, it uh, wasn't rare that they sent out emails and asked certain information if we could come, if it was accessible, and they did not receive any answers back from the service providers. And, uh, and it's, uh, I guess, if we're looking at it uh, from the industry side, it is problematic. And uh, updating information, uh, as far as we have uh, talked with the tourism people here, is not really only about this region. So it's this, they, this group happened to visit Setoma, but the problem tends to be all over Estonia. And, uh, and I think uh, sort of what this group uh, was suggesting was that uh, there might be uh, kind of extrinsic measures of from the outside, how we could pressure the service providers to, uh, to do this. However, it is also important uh, to find how sort of the internal motivation could uh, develop in these service providers, how they could see it being relevant, how it gives back to them, and sort of how they could also receive feedback from, from the information uh, that they are uh, updating. And, and if it's generating more uh, visits to their sites, from which countries, sort of you, your ability also to feed back to them what is the benefit of having updated information. Pretty clear, I guess. But thank you. And, uh, and again...